Hello, this is Vampire here to talk to you guys about gutter fighting once again. Um, gutter fighting, of course, is Captain Fairbairn's CQC, which stands for Close Quarters Combat Method. And um, ever since 1994, when I first discovered Captain Fairbairn's work, I've been hooked. And uh, this comes from my own personal notes on uh, Captain Fairbairn's method. And this, what you're seeing right here, is a revision. So uh, some time ago, I basically uh, said to you guys that gutter fighting pretty much consists of three steps. And I said it was stun, hurt, throw. Well, this is a revision. So this is more accurate. This is, to me, better note-taking. Um, I changed it to shock, hit him hard, and takedown. And I know it's not as catchy as stun, hurt, throw, so that kind of sucks. But like I said, this is more accurate. Um, shock, hit him hard, takedown is SHT. So a, a easy way to remember it is that it is the, the shit is the three steps. SHT, shit. Okay. When shit hits the fan, you give them shit. <laughs> so that, that's kind of how I, uh, I'm, I'm remembering it. So anyway... Um, yeah, let, let me go into this. So gutter fighting, first of all, um, what is it? So when I'm trying to figure out, when I look at a martial art, any style, and I'm trying to figure it out, I try, I, I think about what I call the blueprint. What is their blue, blueprint? What is their DNA? And that boils down to me, the four ranges of combat, and then the three types of combat. So I look at those two things. The four ranges of combat, gutter fighting, is primarily, as, as it says, CQC, close quarters combat, it is primarily done in close range. Okay, so we have long range, medium range, close range, and ground range. Gutter fighting is close range, okay, primarily. And then, out of the three types of combat, which is assault, fighting, and self-defense, gutter fighting is primarily assault. So, so if you're wondering what the heck gutter fighting is, it is assault done in close range. So that's the way, you know, if I, I view gutter fighting, okay, in, in a simplistic, very direct, clear way. For example, when I look at Muay Thai kickboxing, using the same idea there, Muay Thai kickboxing is medium range and close range. And it's not really assault, it's not really self-defense, so it is fighting. So it is fighting done in medium range and close range. That's Muay Thai kickboxing. My system, which I now call it B1 Escrima, B1 Escrima is long range and close range, and it is not assault, it is not fighting, it's self-defense. That's what we focus on. So it's self-defense done in long range and close range. So those are three totally different examples from each other, and, and you, can, you can see how I use that method of the way of thinking so, so that I could you know, understand how to use each one. So anyway, with gutter fighting, like I said, this is an assault system. So number one is shock. Number one is shock because... When you assault someone, the best way to assault someone is to do a surprise attack, right? So it, this relies heavily on a surprise attack. And that's why gutter fighting is not ideal for like a cage fight it, or a boxing match. You know, it, it's not going to do well there because it relies so much on the surprise attack. The surprise attack is what gives gutter fighting its power. When you remove that element of surprise, because the ref is going to be like, you in the blue corner, are you ready? You in the red corner, are you ready? All right, fight. That removes the surprise attack. You, you can no longer really do a, a true surprise attack. Therefore, you know, um, if you try to use gutter fighting, you're going to be operating at, you know, less than optimal. Uh, I would say even less than 50% of, of uh, gutter fighting's capability if you operate like that. You really want the surprise attack. So that's why number one is shock. That's why number one is shock and it's not hit him hard. 
Okay, because yeah, you could try to hit them hard, but if you do that, chances are if you're really trying to hit someone really hard in the first move, then you're going to telegraph your move like crazy. They're going to see it coming. Um, you're going to remove the surprise element. And if that's the case, then you're, you're kind of like hurting your own uh, chances. You know, you're, you're making your three steps weaker, the three steps you see here. So that's why shock is first. Number two is hit him hard. Once you shock them, you have now a much better chance to hit them hard. See how that works together? And if you hit them hard, you will continue the shock. So that's a good thing. <laughs> and then the other reason why you want to hit them hard is really it's not about damage, but it's about getting them off balance. Why? Why is that important? Because look at step three. If you get them off balance in step two, then it's easier to do the takedown. You see how this works together? The shock helps you hit them hard. Hitting them hard helps you take them down. You see, it, it all goes perfectly together. That's why I feel like Captain Fairbairn is a genius. He's a complete genius. This is a perfect system, in my opinion, for the purpose of assault, you know, in, in close range. It, he did an amazing job, and he did it way, way, way back then, and I, I still think it stands today, you know, for this purpose. If you're looking for a close range assault style for that situation, this is amazing. Anyway, um, so why is it important? This is so basically one, two, and three, it's all about the takedown. Why is it all about the takedown? Why is that important? And and the the way that I could tell you guys, okay, is that when we compare this to let's say a uh, a UFC fight all right, a, a professional fighter, someone in the UFC, they're going to be using combos, right? Right? They, that's what pro professional fighters do. They train and, and they're taught to use combos. You look at gutter fighting right here, shock, hit him hard, and takedown. Those are three moves. They're three steps, minimum three moves, right? Well, these three moves you're doing back to back, therefore this is also a combo. So you're using a combo in gutter fighting, but you're also using a combo in a UFC fight. Well, I, I want you guys to understand that these combos are not the same. Okay, they're not the same. So in a UFC fight, fighters are taught something like jab, cross, leg kick. So the leg kick, you're, you're using uh, you're, you're basically going to kick them probably in the calf. The calf kick is very popular today, very effective today. So jab, cross, calf kick, right? And then from there, you're looking for an opening. So if there's another opening, you know, you're going to do another combo, right? So uh, that might be jab, jab, cross, or that might be a cross, jab, cross. Okay, so you're chaining combos together. But there's always, there's a gap. It's not like the heaven six where you go one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. That's not what they're doing. That's not what they're doing, okay? Why? Because when you don't have the surprise element and the other person is game and, and they're fighting back, you can't just keep going like that on somebody. They're not going to let you. And it's difficult to find openings so you have to pick your shots and because you're matched up against someone who's probably similar to you similar as in ranking their fighting capability is similar to you they're not going to put the world champ against a rookie they're going to put <clears throat> people in the same league okay in the same level and you, they're looking for a competitive fight that that's the idea of sport fighting. It's a competition. And, you know, they're not going to put someone in the Olympics against a high school athlete. No, you, you have to be at an Olympic level to be in the Olympics and go up against other Olympians, obviously, right? They're, they're not just going to, you know, so you, you ha they're putting, once you do that, it's going to be a battle of attrition because you're at the same level and Therefore, it's, it can go the distance without a doubt. 
So in that case, the way a professional fighter is, is thinking is with the jab, cross, calf kick, as long as the calf kick adds damage, and they want to keep adding damage to where eventually the other guy can't take it anymore and falls apart, right? That's what you're looking for. You know, eventually, like you're the lumberjack, you have an ax and you're chopping down the tree and their leg is the tree and you're, you're chopping them down over and over. So in other words, damage is super important. Okay. So in gutter fighting, where there is no weight class, you know, this could be the battlefield, this could be the streets. So in this kind of situation, you if you're going up against someone much bigger than you, I'm going, let's say I'm 150 pounds, I'm going up against someone that's 230, okay? I could probably hit them with my best shot and they're just going to smile at me. So if that's the case, this person is street tough. This person grew up in a much harsher environment than me. Their mind is much more violent than mine. So going up against someone like this, right, to expect me to damage them is a very, very difficult thing, very difficult task. But instead, if I off-balance them, basically what Captain Fairbairn is saying, if I end up to where they're off-balance enough to where it leads to a takedown, then I, I could maybe have the time to run away or maybe I could have the time to finish them. Why? Because, let's think about it, a guy that weighs 230 pounds and I weigh 150, if they're standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with me, it's going to be very difficult for me to hurt them. If they're on the floor but I'm standing, I now, even though they're much bigger than me, now I might be able to finish them. The genius of Captain Fairbairn. It's, it, I guess it's physics, whatever you want to call it. But so that's why the takedown suddenly becomes very important here. Okay. So it's not about damaging them at first. It's about off balancing them enough. It's, it's surprise attack them. They don't know what the hell's going on. All of a sudden they're on the floor. They're, they're confused. They're trying to get up. They don't know what, what's happening. And that gives, that's going to give me a big advantage. And, and that is what Captain Fairbairn's system is all about. They don't know, before they know what's going on, I'm going to be, it's going to give me um, several steps ahead of them. And, and this, this three steps is designed to, to milk that. So uh, I hope that makes sense. That's it for now. Thank you for viewing and take care, folks.